Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz and today's Quick Tip Thursday session is all about finding the perfect tone for your black and white photos using black and white effects. Black and white effects, uh, we are actually looking at black and white effects right now, so we're already in the program. It contains several tools to quickly add in tone to your image, and then we can precisely control that tone as well through the um, modules on the right-hand side. So we're going to be going over all of those types of processes and uh, demonstrating how you would do that. So what is toning within black and white images or photography? Toning is something that for me was introduced when I was in the dark room and it's something that just subtly added tone to my images um, and when I was doing silver gelatin work. And it would also help in the archival process of um, keeping the paper really nice and strong. Um, obviously toning within digital black and white is not helping the archival quality of it at all, but it does still add in some depth and um, dimension to your image that isn't there just with a black and white conversion. So no matter how much control you have over all of your tones, adding in a little bit of subtle color or even more intense color to really get um, some strong effects or even trying to simulate older processes like we do here in black and white effects, having control over your tone is really important. So I love the toning possibilities within black and white effects. So how do you do it here within the program? Well, there are several ways. First, please know that black and white effects, most of the presets, we're going to look over here on the left-hand side first within our presets, most of these presets contain some sort of toning. So even if it's traditional collection, which is more subtle, silver gelatin, classic uh, type of conversions and tone, most of these still contain some sort of tone. They're really trying to simulate more of a paper tone, so if you're printing on cool tone paper or warm tone paper, that's really what you'll start to see within these types of presets. So I just chose cool tone one. I'm just going to open up my finishing touches where this, the tones are contained just to show you the before and after. Here's before the tone and then after. It's very subtle, but it can change your image a lot and really add that finishing touch. Below that we have, actually let me go down below the toned collection because I'll go back to the toned collection, um, but below that we have a ton of different um, historical processes and alternative photographic processes like cyanotypes. If you click on the cyanotype collection and pull those up you'll see how much toning is really um, a part of these presets and getting to this point in your image to create these historical simulations. If you're looking for more of a um, traditional uh, silver gelatin or silver darkroom type of toning such as sepia, selenium, gold or copper, you're going to find those here within the toned collection. You can easily apply that to your image. I'm just going to jump into the grid mode so you can see all of them at once. We have everything from antique dye to gold and copper, selenium, sepia, and then mixtures of them all. So if you want to get a sepia and selenium uh, cross toning, you can easily do that here as well. And then if you find something you like, again, just click on it and then this is a great starting point for you to then come into your finishing touches and really make this um, tone your own for your image and the tones that are going on in your image and the contrast that's in your image. So let's go ahead and before we jump over here to the right hand side, let me get my image to a point where I am happy to move on to my tone. I made a uh, let's let me press reset all here. I made a preset, let's see here, Panama Grunge pre-toned. That got my image to a point where I was pretty happy to move on towards my tone. Really work with your conversion first and get your blacks and your whites and your overall contrast. Um, if you want to start off with some presets that we have available, hop on up to the quick tools here and we have these little ink drops and these ink drops are going to be your silver and paper tone, which is your split tone. It's going to use two separate tones. Um, that's going to be your different presets. Over on the left hand side we have a selenium simulation, then we have a gold or blue, copper red, sepia, antique dye, and then all the way on the right is your silver gel, or I'm sorry, you're um, kind of zeroing out. It's no tone whatsoever. It gets you back to no tone. 
if you are looking for something like a just warm tone preset just to kind of make your image a little bit more inviting and a little bit more warm you can quickly get that by going to this little arrow here within the silver and paper tone module and that's going to get you back to the default which is a warm tone that's what we apply by default for you so if you like that warm tone you can just come in and change your tonal strength and it's as easy as that within the silver and paper tone you have the ability to change your tonal strength which we just did change the balance to be more um, tone towards your grays and your shadows or your lighter grays and your highlights. If you go left, you're going to have more paper tone, which will be those whites. And if you go right with your balance, it'll be more silver, which are the blacks. You can change those silver hues and then you can increase the strength of each. So that just increased the strength of my darker grays and my blacks of that warm tone. And now if I want to add a little bit more warm tone into my paper and my whites, I can do that there. Let's say I want to just do a kind of classic split tone and get some nice uh, coolness in my shadows and warmth in my highlights. Just change your silver or paper hue around. So if I want to get some coolness in my shadows, I'm just going to change my silver hue to more towards blue. I'll leave my paper hue where it is at um, the yellow because that's warm. I'm just going to take my silver tone strength down. And now I can come up to my balance and balance it either more towards the yellow and have the yellow highlights stand out a little bit more and the cool shadows not be as apparent or go the other way and have that coolness really stand out in the tone and the highlights just be a little bit less um, obvious. I think I'm going to balance it towards the paper tone and really have those highlights and the warmth come out of my highlights and have the um, silver hue not as apparent and I'll take my tonal strength down as well and here's before and after. So you have the ability to quickly and very precisely work with a split tone here in your silver and paper tone. Below that we have our quad tone. And the quad tone is a little bit more robust. It allows for you to add in four tones to your image and it allows you to place them exactly on the tonal scale that where you want to go. So I'm just going to click that on and it's going to apply the four swatches that were already selected before into the regions that were already selected before. So let's try to simulate a selenium and sepia traditional cross toning effect. When you first, in the silver, uh, working with silver gelatin paper, I used to do this quite a lot actually. I would um, use sepia toner at the end of my development to kind of get some nice warmth and browns in my highlights and then go into the selenium toner to make my print archival but also get some really dark rich blacks with some purples coming through. So let's try to simulate that here within the quad tone while I explain this process. To change your swatches or your colors that you're adding into your image, all you need to do is click on the swatches and that'll pull up a select color picker. So for this, um, for the black, I'm actually going to make it a very, very dark, 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 dark purple just by clicking up here in my magenta area and moving my saturation here to just be a very dark purple instead of black. I'm going to click OK and that's applied in the color swatch. Now I'm going to go into this pink and I'm actually going to kind of keep that pink color except I'm going to take it closer to being desaturated and I'm going to move more towards a dark gray because that's really where it belongs on my scale here. There we go. Next, I come to my uh, mid-tone highlights, so I'm going to click on that, and I'm looking for more of a sepia or brown effect in my highlights and whites, so I'm just going to kind of move these around to where I like the most. Move this down, and again, this is really um, selective, so this is a little bit more powerful of a tool where you can really get exactly what you're looking for. And now we come to my whites and I'm going to get more of just a little bit of a kind of a cream color there. There we go. So now we have these selenium and sepia tones applied to the image. Now when you use this quad tone, this quad tone process, 
please don't forget about the sliders because usually once you've selected the tones themselves, your image isn't looking good. It's usually muddied up. And if you use these sliders to really place the tone exactly where you want it to go and then how you'd like it to blend with the next tone, you can control these tones beautifully, place them exactly where you want, and get the look that you're after to perfect the tone for your black and whites. So very quickly I was able to get this very unique tone that simulates a cross-toned, more historical or more um, traditional analog type of toning process with those really dark, rich, purpley blacks for the selenium and more uh, yellowy brown highlights for that sepia. So I hope this quick tip session really gave you some insight into the toning capabilities of black and white effects, how you can quickly apply uh, your tones using the presets on the left as well as the quick, the quick presets and the quick tools area up here on the upper right, and then how you would go in and really work with each of the toning modules, whichever one you selected to precisely work with how the tone is applied. I know one question really quickly, um, sometimes you get to a point in your quad tone and you say, okay, I really like the tones, but it's just a little bit too heavy, and you're looking for maybe an opacity or something like that. We don't have that within this quad tone module, but it's very easy to make a subtle change or just take out some of the saturation and go more towards gray. And just click on the swatch again. Let's say I want to make this less brown and more, I just want to go more gray. Just take that picker and slide it on down closer to the desaturated area. It'll keep some of that warmth in the gray, but it just will take away um, a little bit of that color strength. So again, very easily to manipulate all of these toning capabilities. Thank you again for joining me here today. Thank you, Ryan, for answering questions, and I hope you're able to join us for next week's session as well. Have a great morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are, and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.